We have a special guest this week, Bonnie Krebs, who's just down the road from Art Impressions, and she has some brand new stamps and a cutting die, too. You are gonna love these stamps. And this actually is one of our most popular lines. We keep adding to it because people just love it. They're super easy to use, they're easy to color, and um, I hope you love these new ones. And they all go together, and she's going to show us some demonstrations. So, come, come play, play with, with us. us. And like Bonnie said, we have four new stamps and they're all part of Windows to the World. Windows to the okay. World uh -huh, is a series that they're part of. And like I said, it's one of our most popular ones and they fit perfectly in the little frame die. And so we've got Osing, uh, the Osing window, we've got Be Joyful, we've got the Shepherd, and we have the Eagle's window. And these all come with the sentiment that is a scripture verse, but you can leave that off as well. So you can just ink the inside of it if you don't want to include oh, the sentiment on okay, there. Okay, good to know. And then the cutting die that she was talking about is this 3D frame die. Not only does it make the frame, but it also has an easel on the back. So we'll show you that, but let's get to the stamping. Let's get okay. to the stamping to start out. And which one are you gonna do? Let's do this one. Let's okay. do the little birds. And because this is all included and everything is included in the stamp, we're gonna start with the stays on. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna just stamp it on the watercolor paper and I'm gonna use the smooth side. Oh. So for the water technique, when you're using oh. pieces of things, we use the textured side. But when we're stamping and everything is included in the stamp, we use the smooth side. Could you okay? just use cardstock? You could use a cardstock okay. as well. Good to know. And really, because the stamp is um, is small, it's really uh, it's about two inches, maybe a little bit over. You can you can color it this way on cardstock. Anything okay. bigger, uh, you probably want to use watercolor paper. Or if you're doing heavy. If you're doing water. heavy, yes, okay. exactly. Good to know. Uh huh. Okay, so let's ink this stamp, and we're going to use the stays on. And this is black. And this is black, yes. So we're gonna ink this up really good. And you can see this one stays in the studio. It's got a sticker on it. It does. So don't <laughs> even try to up. take it home with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I wanna make sure that I get this on here really good and make sure that I get enough ink on there. And then we're gonna stamp it right in the center. And good firm pressure. And there we have our image. Perfect. And now because we use the stays on and we're using watercolor to color it, we're mm -hmm. not gonna have any bleeding. So we wanna do the opposite. Okay. So when we're so using watercolor, yes. But you're still using the La Plumes. Yes, I'm still okay. using the La Plume markers. I color everything with these, but I do it from a palette. So a craft sheet will work mm -hmm. or any sort of a white plastic or acrylic um, uh, board will work too. So what we're doing is we're gonna put the color onto the palette first. If you try to color directly to the paper, it's really dark. It's yes. hard to get a really good um, result. And you're so, still trying to get a watercolor look. Exactly, so, we're okay. still trying to get that watercolor look and we can get a lot of dimension by, by going from a palette first. Okay. So let's put all of our colors on here. So that was the olive? This was the, that was the olive green. Uh -huh. This is called steel blue and it's a really pretty warm, uh, upside down. Uh, light blue, number 17, steel blue, and this is the magic color. This is a sepia, sepia. which is the color of the outside. Okay. It's Bonnie's color. It's my color, it really is, I love that color. And here's another blue, this is uh, um, African violet, so this is a cool blue, so warm and cool. Okay. okay, so now we're gonna dip our brush in water. So I've got my little water over here, and this is really the way I color everything. Um, I just think it's easier and it's quicker. And you don't need a lot of and you, you still don't need a pinched, lot of colors. You still pinch. I still the end pinch of the brush. my end up. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm watching you. And you can mix. So maybe you have a color that isn't exactly right, and maybe you want an orange, and you don't have an orange. So you have a yellow and a red. Okay. You can mix those two together, and you get orange. So well, let's start with straight colors. Let's start okay. with straight colors. So <laughs> well, let's gently, take. Please. Let's ju let's start with baby steps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's uh, make sure our brush is cleaned off, and we're going to take some of this color and let's color these little birds. Okay, so and I'm using the, the I'm using the sepia, and I'm always starting where the color is the darkest, and that would be on the bottom. And you can see that uh, the little birds are are contoured. So we always want to leave a highlight, and the best way to do that is to always think about the light coming straight down. Okay. And that means that you never color directly to the top of anything. 
Okay. Always leave a little white highlight on the top. It's going to give you a lot more dimension. Anytime you color anything line to line, it's going to be flat. Interesting. So okay. you want to always do that. Start with a color light and then you can always come back in with a little more color. Go back down here again. Oh, to do a shadow? To do a shadow. Okay. And so we can get all this. We go light to dark with just one marker. Hmm. And that's by going from the palette. Interesting. And you can do that with any color. We can make these birds any color. So here again, we want to make sure that we leave the tops, the tops of these little birds, we want to leave them light. And it's, it's always better to um, go in light and just add more color later. And I, if, I, if I find that I've come in too dark, I just pinch it off. My hands get dirty, but that's okay. Right. And just start with it light and just bring this color in. Remember the tops always want to have a little highlight. Now, on before them. when you did animals, you went back with the pen and did a black, but because you did a stays on, you don't have to do uh, that. You really don't have to. Okay. If you notice that they're, um, that they're not really dark, go ahead and do that. Um, go ahead and darken those eyes because the faces really are the, um, the most important part of the image. Mm -hmm. So you want to always make sure that those eyes are dark and the faces are light. That's really, really important. And so don't be afraid to do that. If you need to go back in and add a little dark color where the eyes are, um, just do it. Now, even though there are seven birds there, that just really took a moment. It, uh, just a second. <laughs> I know it. It doesn't take very long. Mm -hmm. And for me, if I can't do it in five minutes, it's just, it's not happening. Is that something we should know about That's you? what you should know about me. And I mean, I hate to say it, but I'm going to the grocery store and buying the cart if I can't do it in five minutes. So everything that I come out with, everything that I design, the whole idea behind it is fast, fast and easy. Nice you to have know. to do it, be able to do it quick because I am not one of those organized people that plans ahead very well. So I, I like things that are quick. Okay. And so when I color, I, I color with the markers and I do it from the palette. And see how quick that was? Yes. And see how three dimensional they are? And had we gone through and colored these in line to line, they would have been flat birds. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go and figure out how to get a contour back in. Right. So they don't look flat. Right. Okay, so let's go on and let's take some of this green now and let's do these, um, the little foliage down in here. And these are pretty small. Uh, images, so you don't have to really um, be that a careful. Closer to that, and if you don't get them all perfectly, that's okay too. It's okay not it's to be okay. perfect. I Bonnie say says. that a hundred times. This is supposed to be fun, and the minute it's stressful, well, that just takes all the fun out of it. So we want to make sure that it's fun, that it's quick and easy, and it doesn't stress out all of our people who would say they're not artists. Good deal. So you're really not being horribly careful. About no. That. You're just kind of going in the general uh -huh. vicinity. <laughs> yes. Nice. I'm not very careful about anything that I, I do. It's so good to know these things. About I know you, it. <laughs> I know it. It is. And I'm giving you permission that you don't have to be careful either. Good. You don't have to be. And as you go back, so now we've got our light color on here. When you go back in here and see some of these are back in the background, make those a little darker. Okay. So as you go back in here, just these to get ones. a variation. Uh -huh. Just to get a variation of color. And the more that you um, layer on the color, the darker it will get. So it's really defined where our tulips mm -hmm. are. Okay. You can see. And this, again, is just with one marker, which I love Good because point. it's so quick and easy. And it's, it's easy to travel with these, too. That's another thing that I like. A lot of people travel and want to do something, you know, when they're on vacation. Mm -hmm. And you can easily take your stamps and your six or eight markers that you need nice. and go. Some watercolor paper and, and go play. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so see we've got some dimension back in there. Let's do our little flowers now. And let's pick some of this blue. And we're going to start again where it's the, where it's the um, darkest. And the tops, we want to leave that little highlight on the top. It's just good as a rule not to color everything in solid. If you can get in the habit of doing that, you're going to be way more successful and way happier with how things turn out. I think that's the biggest um, frustration for people is that they spend an hour coloring something and then they hate it. 
and they're oh, not happy no. with it. And that's that just hurts. heartbreaking. <laughs> And, and what I see a lot is coloring line to line. And when you do that, I think it's, it goes back to our coloring book days. It does. You know, when we're in elementary school and we learn to color everything in. And now that, that image is flat. And now you have to figure out how to get some contour back in there. Now you're not coloring every single one, are you? No. Or, or uh -uh, are no. You? <laughs> we don't, no. We don't okay. have to. We don't have to worry about getting everything in perfect. And like I said, if you miss one, um, that's okay. And so you can go back in here now underneath. Oh, now you're doing the darker. Now we're doing the darker again. Okay. Uh-huh. And see, this is all from the palette because you can't get this going direct to paper. Hmm. It's going to be too dark. Boy, you've not used much ink either. I haven't. <laughs> and you know, the other thing about, um, you know, your craft paper and stuff is that you can use that ink over and over again. So if you leave it on there and it dries on there, just go back to it the next day. Oh, really? Just mm -hmm. because you're putting water on it? But you're putting water on it. Okay. Exactly. And if you use a, a palette or a, a white, you know, tile or mm -hmm. your acrylic block, you can leave it on there too. Interesting. And see how much more dimension these little um, flowers have mm -hmm. now? Right. Just by leaving that white um, area. It's such a simple thing, but mm -hmm. it makes such a difference to do that. So let's put some color in the background here. So we've got our little green hills. And we can, we can, um, color over these stays on lines because we're not going to get any bleeding. This is not going to bleed at all. Because you use the stays on. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So we use that stays on. So we don't want to be fighting with that. Right. Just like that. Nice. And let's put a little sky in and we can take a little. And you can see how dark this, um, you can see how dark this African violet color is. If you were to take this, th that's this dark blue. If you were to color that directly onto the paper, see how dark that it's is? It's black. It's almost black. But when you're using your brush and you take a little of that color, see how light you can go? Mm -hmm. You can go really light. And when that darkens, oh, you can go back in again and you can get that contrast of color and you can go darker and darker. Wow. And so you can get all of that contrast with just one marker. Neat. And that's why you um, draw, just coloring anything from the palette is just going to give you a much better result because I know that people are really frustrated that way too. Uh, trying to get a light color and then they're constantly buying lighter markers <laughs> because they can't get that, um, that look. Another thing, leave a little halo around these characters. Don't bring that color directly to them. It's, a, it's sort of a... Um, I don't know if it's a trick of the mind, but it adds a little glow around things to do that. Hmm. So um, just Almost like a the little, highlight. It, it kind of is, too. yeah, it really is. Uh-huh. Just leave a little, a little light around them. And you can go back in here and darken the sky again. So the more colors you put in, the darker it's going to get. But start with the lightest. Let's start with what, the lightest. You do that with everything. I do. That's good. Uh -huh. It's a good process. It is. Yes. And you know, it's not as intimidating. When you start out with dark, dark color, it's very intimidating for people. You're kind of stuck. It feels You're kind like. of stuck. <laughs> yes. Now look at these clouds down here. Mm -hmm. This is the last thing we need to do. And they're going to be white, but nothing ever stays um, uncolored. Okay. We always want to add color to things, even things that are white, because anything colored the same line to line is flat. Right. And, and it that looks applies like it. to white. It really looks like it, it does. now. It does. Exactly. You got flat clouds, lady. We got flat clouds, <laughs> and we are not having it. Okay. We're not having flat clouds. <laughs> fix it. Fix it. Fix it. So we're going to add some color to that, and that would be the shadow, and that's going to be the blue. Okay. So we're going to take our brush in a little tiny bit, and we're just going to kind of go around this contour. Mm. So just follow these lines around. And we're just adding a little color to it. We don't have to do a lot. It's still amazing what just one stroke does. One stroke. Wow. Uh-huh. It doesn't wow. take much. And, and really, really uh, quick, easy projects to do. When you need that card, you just, you have it in five minutes. <laughs> and you don't have to worry. And I, I also think, too, uh, people, what I've seen in the past is that people stress out about what color to pick. Yeah. That's another thing, is trying to figure out what combinations of colors, and really, keep it simple. This is not very many colors on here. So one, two, three, four. Right, right. Four colors, wow. and that's really pretty simple. Okay. And we're good to go. Very good. Now here it is. 
in a darker rendition. Yes. Much darker. And this is a um, this is actually a digital image. So you can scan oh. scan these in and print these out and see how much darker that is. That's much darker, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like the well I love the But you can do the what I love so the water, the pastel um, colors. And we're going to have a switch-o change-o so we can show you how to do this cutting die. You're back. gonna love it. <laughs> and now we have Kate, who you don't get to see. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Say hi to the people. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Kate is also with Art Impressions, and I think she's Bonnie's right hand, actually. <laughs> we have a lot of fun together. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she's gonna show us, this is their new 3D frame, which will perfectly fit the uh, stamps that Bonnie's been demonstrating. Mm -hmm. they, so They fit your windows to the world, but they also fit your watercolor. So oh. those watercolor videos that you've been watching, um, use this frame to make a completed image. So um, this is the outside of the frame, and then it comes with a little easel piece, and it does have a couple of little extra pieces in there, yeah. a couple little flags and banners if you wanted to use them with this. So it does have score lines. I'm gonna go around this. There's two double score lines yeah, in the center. Get this out of your way. Oh, thank okay. you. Two double score lines, just fold on those all the way around. So one score, two score. And I'm just gonna kind of prep these. So I'm just doing mountain folds all the way around, getting it all prepped. This helps because there's some corner edges in here and you don't wanna try to be folding if something's already three dimensional. It makes it a little bit more difficult. From there, we have tabs on the ends of these pieces. So they just slide right through these openings inside of there. So you can see how that's already okay. creating a 3D piece. Since I have these already prepped, I can just easily go all the way around and slide those pieces in. And so that corner is already mitered for you. Yes, so it nice. just makes it nice and easy. I just keep these little tabs flat and just push them inside. This is perfect for if you wanted to mail a framed item, just put a little bit of bubble wrap inside of this. It's a great way to send a finished image to all of your friends. So you can see I've got my tabs back here. I'm just gonna fold those back. It's just gonna kinda hold them. If you really wanted to make sure it was super secure, you could put scotch tape around it, but I'm just folding back these tab pieces just to give it a little notch so that it's holding those. Okay? Okay. From there, I'm gonna just take my main image and I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the edges. Now you trim this down. I did trim down Bonnie's watercolored image that she just showed you, just so that it'll fit inside this frame. Once I've got a little bit of glue on it, I can see exactly where I want to position this. So I can take it over, got all my flaps down, Sounds like you're flying. Yes, all my <laughs> flaps are down and I'm ready to land on top of this image. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna kind of square it up and push down where I want it. Okay. So that I can fit it perfectly behind there. Once you've got it, I'm just gonna press down inside of here so that it sticks. Okay? Mm -hmm. Framed Great. image. Easy. If you Easy. want to pop up that image, you could cut just a square piece to put on the back of three and three quarters. Kind that would finish it. That would finish the mm -hmm. back side of it. But just to show you really quickly, there's this little easel piece. There's two little score lines on it. This cuts out of the very center of your frame when you run it just one time through your die cut machine. And it creates this little kind of mountain fold. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm just gonna run some glue on the back side of this. And one, one side is angled. So one side is angled here and you have your flat side. The angled side goes down. So the way that I do it is I set it on my table so I know exactly how flat I want it and push it against the center. I can take it, make sure it's nice and upright. Okay. So that's gonna be your little easel so that it can stand on its own. Okay, perfect. So you can easily perfect. display that image, put it on a, a windowsill or on your mantle so yeah. that you can display your watercolor. Now you mentioned that you could do watercolor. So this is mm -hmm. a container. We did the little bird. We know how to do all of this. So that's mm -hmm. another way that you can do. So any any little, um, about a, it's a three inch frame, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So anything that's a little bit shorter, smaller than that will fit nicely yeah. right inside. And you've got that easel. So. A great way to finish out your artwork. You're making oh. these beautiful pieces of art. You're 
true artist now with Bonnie's techniques. Hot diggity. And so now you can frame them and display them around your home or give them as gifts. Okay, and as always, um, these are available in a bundle with all four of them and the frame die, or you can get them separately. All works together, all works perfectly. And thank you, Art Impressions, Kate and Bonnie. We'll we see you so again. Yes, we do too. <laughs>